Hi everyone, welcome. I'm out here in my yard and you could see where the container was out there. I moved it over here into the shadow of the tree as I usually do because it cuts down on that really harsh light as if you're out in the sun. So we've already um, had this cover off for the most of the day. We're reaching an unseasonably warm high temperature today. It's up in the mid 40s, which is a little bit unusual for my region in mid January, which is usually a little bit colder, but once in a while you get a little bit of a warm spell that blows through. And it seemed like it would be an opportunity for us to peek in on how our outdoor worm bag is doing. Three weeks ago, we came in here last to give it what we decided would be its last feeding. I believe it received maybe 16 or 17 feedings over its entire lifespan. And you know what? I'm getting a little bit concerned here. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't even seem to move any of this material. It's just a big frozen block, which seems very unusual. I was able to get into my, um, my regular compost barrel by just reaching into it and, um, and breaking through. But then again, that compost barrel sits on the ground and it is not suspended up in the air the way this bag is. This bag doesn't go all the way to the bottom of this trash pail. There's another piece of wood similar to this resting on top of an upside down planter within this garbage pail. And that's where the um and that's where the bag rests on top of that. But I'm wondering if maybe without the protection of being on the ground, maybe the cold air has come in and maybe this thing is frozen solid. And if that's the case, then I would have to think that that's probably the end of the experiment, unfortunately. Certainly not what I was expecting, you know, because, I mean, just as a point of reference, I came into this system just the other day. And out of curiosity, I started burrowing down beneath where the most freshly added food scraps were, and I had no problem reaching relatively loose material and, um, and worms. You know, worms down in there working the material. Obviously all living and moving and perhaps a little bit chilly and a little bit slow as a result of the cold temperature, but perhaps the key difference is that this is actually a container that doesn't really suspend the contents above the ground. What's on the ground is on the ground and it's somewhat protected so i don't know what to expect here at this point i am a little bit concerned if i could just find one soft spot that would allow us to get to the inside then we'd be able to see what's going on but if this thing's frozen solid i think it's uh it's history for the inhabitants of it regrettably and that would have to be chalked up entirely to a pretty bad mistake on my part hmm so you may have noticed a couple of these worms over here. These are worms that I actually picked up off the ground who were um, right below the container. After I moved it aside, they were just, re they were hiding below. And I picked them up thinking, hey, we put them in here, they'll be better off. But uh, I'm starting to think that that's not really the case anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, look at There's actually frost within the material here, but I think I just managed to poke my finger through here. I got a couple tools that we can maybe use to try to gain a little leverage here. If we could just work our way to a pocket where there's still pliable material, it would be a little bit of a relief. And I think we just confirm that we're not in the danger zone anymore. There does seem to be a, a pocket of material in the middle that's not frozen, thank heavens. And we've already got some worms popping out as we excavate. But I certainly hope we haven't just done in our, oh my goodness, here are these poor little guys. Holy cow. I think this is like super close tragedy averted kind of situation here, you know? I think, I think keeping this thing suspended above the ground is not a good idea anymore. The original reason for doing that was because I was getting an invader creature coming into my 
systems like a mole or a shrew or something and I I realized very late in the game that that little guy was managing to pluck off the entire contents of my system and pretty much wiped out the entire worm population in this bag last summer I think that was last summer or was it two summers ago <laughs> um wow but like ever since then I didn't want to keep leaving this bag on the ground because because of whatever it is that was getting in here and killing all the worms I mean, it was great for that creature getting a huge stash of food very easily captive you know kind of like shooting fish in a bowl but as a result it managed to wipe out almost every worm in that in this bag at that time and I was really reluctant to bother with re resetting the system but I'm glad that the you know viewers all convinced me to do just that and we we got it going again with worms that we pulled out of that other compost barrel and uh, and we were able to get this population kicking again I think this is actually that population that we had to regenerate from scratch after the invasion I'm gonna have to check my notes <laughs> All right, so I'm just, I don't know why. I just feel like if I break it apart, maybe it'll be exposed to some of this 40 plus degree air and begin to thaw. I mean, I did kind of come out here at the very tail end of the day. I figured, you know, allow the warm temperatures to uh, thaw things out a little bit for a few hours before we came out here to check. But I'm sure glad I didn't skip doing this today because I think, uh, oh man, I feel like if we had, we'd be in serious trouble here. So I think we've got to come up with a different plan. It seems like something as simple as just resting the bag on the ground might be sufficient. But I think that another thing that I've done in the past might help here as well, which is to relocate the system to be right near the house, up against the house actually, so that it benefits from a little bit of that radiant heat coming off the house and that should protect it from having this happen to it again but oh my goodness <laughs> and now look when we first came in here and before we were faced with this terrible situation that nearly killed off our poor worms here we were going to see how certain things in here are progressing and you know one of them was this apple geez louise i can't believe it's still distinguishable as an apple it's got to be two months now going on how long this thing's been in here. The other fascinating uh, leftover piece of fruit that we've been observing the progress of is a kiwi, which would be kind of nice to think that maybe it finally got penetrated and eaten because I don't see any signs of it. My goodness, these poor worms. It's incredible how tough these little guys are. Yeah, you know, I think I'm gonna have to uh, I'll have to pause the camera because I'm gonna need uh, need to go scope out a space where we can relocate the system to. In the meantime, I'll drag it back out into the sunshine so we can maybe uh, gain a little bit of warmth naturally. But we'll put it someplace where it's got a better chance of, um, you know not being harmed by the encroaching winter weather once it cools down again. All right, I don't know if that whole streaming sunshine is a good effect or not, but I figured I'd give it a try. Certainly can't hurt in terms of uh, letting in some of the warmth, but you know what? Let me go find a new place where we could relocate this thing to and we'll get this, uh, get this system into a safer spot. Okay, you can see here it's got its own shadow. We moved it out of the shadow of the tree and you can see I've got obviously a whole bunch of mud on my shoes. I better not run inside the house without kicking off my sneakers first. <laughs> but I've found a place where I wanna relocate this system to. Right now it's in the shade, so I thought I'd just leave it here for now since there is the benefit of the um, solar energy hitting this thing for the next couple hours before it dips down below the horizon. And I'm gonna leave this open like this too because the, uh, the air is nice and warm and comfortable today too. So I thought maybe just a little bit of the air exposing this frozen stuff down here 
to a little bit of warmth might help thaw things here and then uh and then i'll come back out here when there's no more sun to take advantage of and i'll position this system over next to the house and um and i think the other key element here is going to be to get it out of this um elevated situation and just let it rest right on the ground where it also gets protection from below so i've got a game plan and whew, man i gotta tell you i got scared there for a second when i came in here thinking i might be able to just reach through and you know break uh break through maybe a thin layer of frozen material on top but the fact that it was you know as thick as my hand and just as thick all the way around it seems you know we're pretty lucky to have um had this little remaining pocket of warmth in the middle which i, I don't know if it could have lasted you know or do worms at do worms create their own wor warmth and can you know save themselves from encroaching freezing material surrounding them there's got to be a limit you know so maybe uh maybe they would have made it but i just feel safer giving them that little extra protection of being over by the house and actually being on the ground at this point i don't think the little invading creature that has taken advantage of the system in the past will be able to uh well you know that's i can't say that <laughs> um it does seem like there is still that risk if I put this thing back on the ground, but it's probably um, safer than, you know, dealing with Mother Nature. All right, everyone. Well, that's it for this check-in with our outdoor worm bag. Three weeks of foraging, and there's still a lot of leftovers, and it's probably because the worm action in here has probably slowed down a lot, so that stuff that's in there is probably going to last them all winter. <laughs> and how the winter proceeds will be hopefully a little bit less harsh on them over next to the house so i'm going to take care of that later for now that's it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel too that's really appreciated as well all right everyone thanks for watching have a great day bye now